वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज एनसीआर रीडर एंड इस चैप्टर में हम लोग डिस्कस करने वाले हैं ऑसिलेशन एंड वेब चैप्टर के बारे में दिस इज दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू हेल्प यू वेरी सुन दैट वंस यू आर गोइंग फॉर दिस इनिशियल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इफ यू आर गोइंग फॉर राइटिंग द जेई मेन एग्जाम जेई मेन एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से अगर आप देखते हैं तो ये वीडियो आपके लिए काफी इंपॉर्टेंट होगा क्योंकि इसमें काफी कम टाइम इंटरवल में हर एक चीज को कोशिश किया गया है कि वो चीज आपको पता होना चाहिए वाइल यू आर राइटिंग द जेई मेन एग्जाम इट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर यू टू रिमेम्बर सम रिजल्ट ऑल्सो फॉर वेन यू आर राइटिंग द जेई मेन एग्जाम बिकॉज क्वेश्चन विल बी सेवेंटी फाइव क्वेश्चन यू हैव टू सॉल्व अवर देयर इन द just three hours only so 25 question you have to solve at a level of 1 hour it is so this could be difficult for the student who are looking for 99 percentile and um, once they are not having the results a uh, few results there in their mind so this could be helpful for you if you go for the complete video solish uh, video this lecture here it is this is for oscillations and wave i am considering uh, in this video lecture and also one thing that um, it will help you for writing the j advance also when you are going for some fundamental and basic concept over there so this is uh, starting with the lecture here it is this is periodic motion so periodic motion us tarah ka motion ko hum log periodic motion kahenge jo ki repeat karta hai ek fixed interval of time ke baad jaise earth ka motion agar sun ke round dekha jaye to wo periodic motion ho gaya theek hai so that motion is called periodic oscillatory kind of motion when we have to and fro kind of motion or back and forth kind of motion it will be oscillatory so to and fro or back and forth kind of like simple pendulum we have that is oscillatory motion this motion is also known as vibratory kind of motion now oscillatory motion uh, whenever we have it is uh, periodic only this you need to keep in mind but uh, all periodic motion can't be uh, oscillatory it is so that may or may not have mentioned here that all the periodic motion cannot be oscillatory as for example if you are having the example of earth motion only around the sun this is periodic motion but this is not oscillatory kind of motion it next <coughs> sorry <coughs> next we have uh, what is periodic function to understand here it is so you can understand the periodic function so periodic function uh, you must have uh, read in that uh, mathematics chapter it is <coughs> so what uh, i'm sorry <clears throat> whenever we have this kind of function like uh, function t plus some general uh, this period of the function it is and if we are getting the same function it is called periodic periodic function it is so this f is called periodic here and t is your period here so that you can say here it will be <laughs> it will be periodic function so that you can say here now coming to the harmonic motion that when we say that harmonic motion so whenever we have oscillatory motion of a particle that can be expressed in terms of sine and cosine so this is very important that whenever we have oscillatory motion i mean if you, you can write that oscillatory motion in case of sine and fa cosine function then that function is, that motion is called harmonic motion so first thing that you should keep in mind that it should be oscillatory in motion the second thing you can make that oscillatory motion in cosine and sine function then it will be harmonic that is the two things you need to keep in mind then what will be the simple harmonic motion so what the harmonic motion we are having it is kind of simple harmonic motion it is kind of simple i mean once you are writing that force uh, that is uh, uh, displacement as some sinusoidal function then definitely it will be simple harmonic it will be so it should be linear function of sinusoidal so here what i have written that whenever we have the force force is directly proportional to the displacement negative of the displacement so whenever this kind of features will be there that force is directly proportional to <clears throat> negative of the displacement then we can say force is equal to you can remove this proportionality constant and here force will be minus of kx so from here this force is called kind of a storing force and this force is nothing but the what you can say that this is the force which is having the opposite correct opposite direction of the force at direction will be in opposite direction and the particle displacement and the force are in opposite to each other then and if it is directly proportional to the force uh, displacement that when we increase that this x value here it is the force will increase <clears throat> we say that it is kind of a such a 
So this force I can write like this m into a and then minus k into x. And from here you can see this is acceleration is equal to some omega square m into x minus of omega square into x. So this is the what you can say equation of L, equation of the format where you can say this is as such a simple harmonic motion it is. So whenever acceleration of the particle is opposite to the displacement, that acceleration is acting suppose towards mean position and displacement is act, acting away from the mean position. In that case, the if acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement, we say it as an assumption. So we can write acceleration to be d2x by dt square here and uh, this uh, differential format, you can say this is the differential format, what you can say d2x by dt square and this is minus of k by m x. So this is what we are having. This is called differential <coughs> equation of the SHM d2x by dt square plus this omega square x. This is our dis differential equation of SHM. Now, if the equation is in the form of a sin omega t, if the equation in the form of a cos omega t, or if the equation in the form of this x, I have been taken as the displacement here it is. So if displacement can be written like a sin omega t, and plus minus of b cos omega t. So these are the representation of SHM equation. So we can say these are SHM kind of equation we are having. So if the function is like we are having x is equal to a sin square omega t, and uh, if you uh, just look at this function, this is sin square format. So once we can change this for sin square into linear format, and then you can see this is also representing the representing the SHM, but here amplitude we are having is a by two and the mean position is a by two. Why mean position is a by two? So once you are putting this function to be zero, when it, this function, this sinusoidal function is zero, by that time x we are having a by two. So that is called your mean position. When we don't have any sinusoidal function over there, so where that x is, that is your mean position, you can see. What will be the time period over here? So you can see this, so this function is having two omega, is the coefficient of t. So what the coefficient of t will be there, that is your omega function. So here you can say that time period will be two pi by omega. And what you can say that here it is omega is two pi only. So two, this will be pi by omega. So this is the time period of this, uh, this SHM here. So you can get idea about the time period that whatever the function displacement you are writing sinusoidal function. So what the coefficient of time is there that is will be, that will be the angular frequency and from angular frequency, you can write the time period as t is equal to 2 pi divided by that angular frequency omega here it is. <clears throat> Next, we have velocity and acceleration of the particle in case of executing SHM. So I'm considering with the displacement of particle to be a sin omega t, where a is the amplitude. Once you differentiate this equation, this dx by dt with respect to time it is, so this will be a omega cos omega t. Here, this is the function of time. So we can see that this velocity is function of time here it is. So whenever we are looking to have the velocity as a function of time, just differentiate it and you will be having the velocity. But sometimes it is asked you that velocity is uh, the function of position, it is displacement. So how we can write, but here this is the relation what I have mentioned here that uh, once you can write this cosine function as sine, so it will be sine uh, pi by two plus of theta. So it is uh, in the same, you can see your velocity and displacement are having phase difference of pi by two. So what you can say in case of SHM that velocity always leads the displacement by pi by two, pi by two. So this is always true in case of SHM. When you are uh, looking for SHM and velocity and displacement and acceleration will be there. So velocity will leads the displacement by pi by two. This you should keep in mind when you are thinking about the SHM. Then the next uh, point, it is velocity in terms of position, how you can get for velocity in terms of position. So from the displacement relation, x is equal to a sine omega t. You can write over there sine omega t here, it is x by a. And from there, you can write cos omega t, one minus sine square omega t. And from there, we have cos omega t, this in blue. So you can replace this cos omega t in the velocity function. It is a omega cos omega t. So from there, you can write this velocity as omega is square x is square under root. So this is the uh, velocity as a function of x. Once you substitute here x to be zero, so this is mean position. So there it will be uh, maximum speed we are having that a omega it will be. 
but if you are substituting that x is equal to a it will be at extreme position and by that time we will be having speed zero extreme position so implies we can say their kinetic energy also it will be zero we will talk about the energy segment in the latter part of this video it is so let's come to the point that where we have the velocity in the form of this a omega cos omega t so how we can write this acceleration so once you differentiate a velocity with respect to time you'll be getting that acceleration value so here it is a omega d by dt of cos omega t so what is the cos omega t differentiation it is minus of sin omega t then Chain, chain rule you can apply over here it is and then omega factor will be there so this is minus a omega square sine omega t and from you can see here this is if i remove this minus sign with the sign we can add like this sign uh, pi plus of theta so that is in second quadrant oh sorry third quadrant so it will be minus of sine uh, theta over there so i can write this in form of a omega square sine omega t plus pi and you can correlate this also that this is uh, actually a sine omega t uh, format what we are having here it is it is a displacement only so you can write this uh, acceleration to be it is uh, in the form of minus of omega square x here you can see this is the acceleration so from this uh, relation here you can see that this acceleration also leads the velocity uh, this acceleration of shm also leads the velocity by pi by 2 why pi by 2 because in case of a velocity relation we are having this asm a omega sine omega t plus pi by 2 and here we are having acceleration a omega square sine omega t plus pi so obviously the phase difference between velocity and acceleration acceleration and velocity is pi by 2 and acceleration is leading the velocity also one thing you can correlate that whenever we have displacement in positive direction and the uh, acceleration in opposite direction uh, that negative direction there is phase difference between displacement and the acceleration will be pi only so this is uh, what you can say in case of SHM only it will be if it is there and acceleration is also directly proportional to negative x. This is the case condition here. You can say direction is all about this only. And if this factor is there, you can say this will be in the case of SHM. Now, all the things, whatever I have discussed here, you have discussed discuss this thing, you can see in a chart, mein finally, yahan pe likha gaya hai. this you can say for remembering purpose you can go for this one that all the parameters i have mentioned here displacement then velocity then acceleration it is and displacement is in as a function of time a sin omega t and what is the variation with the position here in displacement we don't have any variation here with the position this i have written with respect to the time it is so what you can write for velocity here it will be a omega cos omega t velocity this in the form of position so it will be plus and minus plus means it will be mean rightward to the mean position and leftward to the uh, this mean position that is minus sign here it is acceleration is minus of a omega square sin omega t and you can write this acceleration also that it is minus of omega square x so in this case you can see the if uh, i want to write this uh, at the mean position so what will be the displacement at mean position it is zero what will be the velocity at mean position it is plus and minus of omega plus omega means omega a a omega so at mean position, it is A omega plus A omega minus. Minus and plus shows only direction factor. The magnitude part of the speed will be on A omega only. That will be at mean position. And what about the acceleration at the mean position? It will be zero. So you can see the mean position. We are having displacement zero, acceleration zero, but still there is velocity. It is exist. So these are some uh, relation which is really very important where we don't have any acceleration over there at a particular instant we don't have any displacement but we are still having the maximum speed over there so this is very important for physics point of view if you think of it minutely now the next we are having at extreme position if you are looking for extreme position the displacement will be either plus a or minus a that is called amplitude factor <clears throat> sorry and uh, at that instant we are having the velocity zero and the acceleration will be minus and plus of omega square a minus omega square a it means that it is moving in the direction of origin a uh, mean position it is and if it is a uh, plus direction means it is moving in the direction of opposite to that one so that will be plus only so minus and plus sign shows the only direction if it is plus sign that will be the positive direction if it is minus sign it will be the negative direction so that you need to keep in mind now the last segment of this chart it is at t is equal to zero once you are putting t is equal to zero in that case what will be the displacement over here it is zero why it is zero because x 
is equal to a sin omega t and this is sinusoidal function. So once you are putting t is equal to zero, this will be zero only. But at t is equal to zero, if you put over here, this is cosine function. So velocity will be maximum over there at t zero. That is why I have written here this one at mean position. So mean position doesn't mean that at t zero, maybe that we are having some mean position at t zero also. So initial position, uh, there may be possibility that uh, there will be some deviation of the mean position with respect to the origin or reference point it is. So if it is not stated in the problem or question that mean position is taken to be zero, then you need to careful over there that what is what should be the mean position because on mean position only many things are uh, related over there and mean with respect to mean position only everything you can calculate where will be the extreme position what will be the amplitude over there so everything will be depending upon the mean position if suppose mean position is not happening at the origin in that case what happened that then we have to first find out where is the mean position how you can find out the mean position so uh, this is what you can say at t0 at t0 is your initial position so that is the time at which wherever the position over there that is called your mean position so whenever we put that t is to be zero over there, so that time what the displacement of the particle is there, that is called your mean position. That you can understand. <clears throat> Sorry. Next at t zero, we don't have any expression because this is omega square x only. And here we are considering that mean position at t zero only then on the basis of that, this chart I have made here. If it is not a stated mean position is at origins and then that was you have to think that where will be the mean position and accordingly everything will be shipped over there. Now coming to the next segment that what is graph of SHM. So whenever we have SHM over there and how you can relate the graph three graphs, you will be having one is position time graph. So this graph I have written on the basis of that X is equal to A sine of omega T. This is the general uh, displacement relation with the time period. Then this is the velocity relation we are having. So this is the time t by two, here we have t, here we have three t by two, and here we have two t. In the same manner I have written here, this is t by two, so this will be t by four over here, this will be t by two plus t by four, and this will be here it is t. So at t, uh, you can see the maximum speed we are having that uh, by the time speed, and again it is falling like that. So this, this is the amplitude part of the speed, and this is the amplitude part in, opposite direction of the speed uh, and uh, here you have that maximum speed amplitude and this is the amplitude in opposite direction. Now this is your acceleration time graph. Why I have taken acceleration graph is the minus direction because you can see x, x value we are having this a sin of omega t. But what about the velocity relation we are having? Velocity relation we are having as this is a omega and then cos omega t. So this graph must be start from the extreme position only. So here is the graph is starting point here. We are having this graph. It is starting from this position. This position it is starting. The sinus uh, cosine function, you can see this graph should be. Now for this relation acceleration, we are having acceleration is equal to, this is minus of a omega square and then it is sine of omega t. So in this case, you can see what the acceleration is, it is minus whatever this function is there, this is a omega square is the constant part, whatever it is, but sine omega t function, it will start from uh, mean position only, but uh, with the negative direction, what it should be start. So this is the positive direction of sine omega t format graph, and this is the negative graph. So what the, uh, you can see acceleration graph is uh, just reversing the direction of what the displacement graph it is there. So that is the thing. And what is the amplitude or maximum acceleration? You can see here it is a omega square. A omega square here is the maximum amplitude you can see. Here. That is the amplitude of the acceleration. So from the graph, you can manipulate many things here. This graph is related with the time graph, time period, as well as the amplitude and the or you can say velocity and the position. So accordingly, we have. Now, there is one graph very important in this chapter that it is. It is the graph between that velocity and the position over there. This this question already asked in JMM three times in a SHM case that when what is the graph between velocity and the position. So we know that the relation between velocity and position, we know that it is V is equal to omega is square minus of X square under root. So once you can, uh, you can see here squaring the relation, you'll be getting like this and on simplification, we'll be having this V square by S square omega square plus X square by S square is equal to one. This is the graph, a standard graph of ellipse. As you must be knowing that this relation of ellipse is x square by s square plus y square by b square is equal to 1 it is and this 
and this uh, a is uh, it is semi major axis and it is b is semi minor axis here so if you compare x to b the x axis to be the x displacement here and y axis to be the velocity so here x semi major axis you have the amplitude and on semi minor axis we have this a omega so a speed only a maximum speed only here we will be having so this is the graph you need to keep in mind that maybe with related to this concept they can ask you some question maybe i'm not sure but maybe but this is very important because of the three times it is asked so you should keep in mind now this is what i have mentioned here is the equation of shm in different situation so what are the situation here if i consider this to be the uh, displacement a sin omega t plus of phi where phi is your initial phase and a is the amplitude omega is angular frequency t is the time here and x is the displacement so once it is starting from the mean position because this graph you can see here we are having sinusoidal displacement so it is starting from mean position x is equal to zero by that time we have let's suppose that phi is zero this consideration here so the particle if it will start moving towards this direction rightward so we should start with the equation a sin omega t at the mean position when it will reach to the extreme position and it is moving towards the mean position so i should start with the displacement graph like this a sin omega t and plus of uh, a sin a, a cos omega t why i have taken this as a cos omega t so because at that instant phi is here if you write here phi this is pi by 2 so what is sin omega t sin pi by 2 plus theta it is cos theta so this will be the direction this is at extreme position so this will be the displacement at extreme position once the graph uh, this uh, uh, particle is moving towards left direction from the mean mean position so it should be written like x is equal to minus of a sin omega t and when it is reaching to the extreme position extreme position so by that time you can see here we can uh, have extreme position this is x is equal to minus of a so what can we can write for x is equal to it is minus of a cos omega t so, ये आपको ध्यान रखना होगा कि पार्टिकल का जो मूवमेंट हो रहा है सच में वो कहाँ से हो रहा है मेन पोजिशन से हो रहा है या एक्सट्रीम पोजिशन से हो रहा है अकॉर्डिंगली यू कैन स्टार्ट विथ योर डिस्प्लेसमेंट इक्वेशन ओवर देयर नाउ यू कैन सी हियर आई हैव कंसीडर दिस पॉइंट एक्स ए बाय टू पोजिशन वेयर वेन द एक्स इज एम्पलीट्यूड हाफ ऑफ द एम्पलीट्यूड बाय दैट टाइम दिस इज फेस डिफरेंस विल बी हियर विल बी हैविंग फाइव बाई सिक्स सो वन यू कैन राइट दिस एक्स टू बी Here, this x to be a by two a a get cancel out so sine theta will be half so it is pi by six again at this point we are having extreme position we have this pi by two phase again once it will come back to this same position so there will be phase difference of pi pi by six then same manner you will write here and then find out the phi value you will be getting the same when it is reaching to the origin part mean part it is is it was moving this way and now it is moving in this direction. so at this direction we are having phi is equal to pi here pi so what is the meaning of pi here that means that it is start with the this direction positive x direction now it is moving the mean position over in opposite direction so at that instant with respect to the initial point it is at a phase of pi now when it is coming to this point here it is so at that instant it is 7 pi by 6 again when it is coming to the extreme position it is 3 pi by 2 and again when it is coming to this position a by 2 in this direction then it is 11 pi by 6 so you can correlate here phi and here it will be 2 pi when it is coming to the same position when it is start from the mean position so from this diagram you can have many question solving in in just one minute or 30 second 40 second you can solve because of this is complete analysis about the Uh, position as well as time and as well as you can see here uh, amplitude also and uh, phase difference also you can have on this graph everything is mentioned in this one so you can see a phase difference between the two particle at a by 2 position a by 2 position is the here only here i am considering a by 2 position so one time when it is going away uh, from mean position and when it is coming uh, towards mean position so this is the Pi by six, and here we are having five pi by six. So, what is the phase difference here? You can say it is two pi by three, two pi by three. So, this is the phase difference between two particle at a by two position when it is going away from mean position, when it is coming towards mean position. So, that is the thing you can uh, calculate many a kind of question here. It will arise over there. So, okay. Next, we are having this energy in SHM format, and uh, we'll be discussing in this segment about. kinetic energy and potential energy and uh, average kinetic energy 
maximum kinetic energy, minimum kinetic energy. Let's have a look of this one. So I have mentioned one chart over here, which is very important to understand this. On the basis of result only, I have mentioned. So once you will go for the derivation and that kind of things, then only you will understand that what I have written here. So whenever we have displacement, it's let's suppose time period is T and its frequency is F. So what will be the kinetic energy time period? It will be it will be T by two. And what will be the frequency? Obviously, if the time period is getting half frequency, will be doubled. Now, in case of potential energy, it, its time period will be T by two and its frequency will be doubled. What will be the difference in kinetic energy? Here, this kinetic energy and this potential energy, what the difference we are having in this case? Sorry. So in this case, we, you are getting T by four and four, Four, four times of frequency over there. In case of total energy, if you are talking about, then that time period will be infinity here, and this is the frequency will be zero. So here you can see what is the kinetic energy. Uh, you can find out how you can find out the kinetic energy. So we know that kinetic energy is half mv square and v is equal to omega times a square minus x square, or also you can write in terms of uh, time function a omega cos omega t. So here, what will be the kinetic energy? You can see here half m omega square a square minus of x square. This is the kinetic energy what we are having. Then if you go for the maximum kinetic energy, this is half m omega square a square and that is equal to total energy. At the mean position, if you are looking for, so where will be the kinetic energy maximum? It will be at mean position. At mean position it will be. And where the kinetic energy will be zero, it will be zero at the extreme position. Where the extreme position will be there, that point we have displacement as amplitude. It will be plus or minus, plus means rightward, left minus means leftward. Now this is the kinetic energy in terms of function of time it is. So what you have half m v square, you can replace v with a omega of cos omega t. So here this is half m a square omega square cos square omega t. Now from this relation you can see kinetic energy we are having in the function of cos square format. So that is why I have taken there if you replace this cos square format in the linear format then you can see here what I have written that it will be having time period as t by 2 t by 2 because of this square format what we are getting here. This is the constant part of the cos, cos function. So this is the amplitude part. You can see what will be the, if you take this cos square format at the maximum value. So this is your half m a square omega square. By that time, what the time kinetic energy we are having, that will be the total energy. Now, once you go for the average value of the kinetic energy, so this cos square function average value is cos square omega t. In the one time interval, it will be, it will be half so the average value here, kinetic energy will be having one by four ms ma square omega square. So these are the terms which is very helpful for you to remember, and you can uh, get direct result of this one, this one, so that you can solve the question. Next, we are having the potential energy. So potential energy we are having this potential energy as half m omega square x square, where x is the position. And this is the potential energy in terms of function of x, where x we can write in sinusoidal format. It is a sine omega t, this one. Now, if you write this x to be in function of time format, so you can write half m omega square and then x square, you can replace here. It will be a square sine square omega t. This is the potential energy in terms of function of time. Now, you can write the potential energy maximum. Oh, you can find out the potential energy maximum. So potential energy maximum will be, it is half m omega square a square. Here it is. What the sine function we are having sine square maximum value of sine square function will be one only. So you can say that here it is, it is half m omega square a square. And this is at, this is what it is total energy of the uh, SHM over there. And this will be at extreme position where the kinetic energy will be zero. Now, अगर मैं पोटेंशियल एनर्जी के मिनिमम वैल्यू की बात करें तो यहां पे ये जीरो होगा कहां पे जीरो होगा मीन पोजीशन पे जीरो होगा इसका एवरेज वैल्यू का अगर बात करें तो सेम फंक्शन यहां पे sin स्क्वायर का जो एवरेज वैल्यू होगा एक टाइम पीरियड में वो हाफ होगा सो दिस विल बी दिस विल बी 1 4m omega square a square सो काइनेटिक एनर्जी और पोटेंशियल एनर्जी आप एवरेज में देखिए इट इज हाफ m a square omega square हियर सॉरी 1 4m a square omega square हियर आल्सो इट इज 1 4m a square omega square. So these are the things which you can remember that kinetic energy, average value, potential energy, average value, it is same kinetic energy, minimum value zero. Potential energy, minimum value is also zero. It is kinetic energy, maximum value, whatever we are having. That same potential energy, maximum also we are having. Only difference we are having is that kinetic energy, where the kinetic energy maximum, that time we are having potential energy minimum. 
So if this is not stated in the problem that at mean position we are having that zero potential energy at mean position, then if it is not mentioned that we are having some potential energy at the mean position, then we consider it to be zero. Agar question mein ye cheez mention nahi kiya gaya hai ki potential energy mean position pe zero hoga. So aap agar mean position pe zero nahi diya hua hai, uh, agar potential energy kuch diya hua hai mean position pe, to us pa aapko consider karna hoga. Otherwise, agar nahi kuch mention kiya hai, to aap us question mein mean position pe potential energy ko zero maanenge. Or usi ke basis pe sare kaam ko karenge. अगर क्वेश्चन में मेंशन होगा कि मीन पोजीशन पे कुछ पोटेंशियल एनर्जी है तो उसको कंसीडर किया जाएगा और उसके बेसिस पे फिर सारे एनालिसिस को आप करेंगे क्योंकि मीन पोजीशन पे पोटेंशियल एनर्जी कुछ दे दिया गया है तो वो हमेशा ऐड रहेगा और वो एनर्जी हमेशा कांस्टेंट रहेगा दैट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड सो व्हाट इज द टोटल एनर्जी वी आर हैविंग वन इज काइनेटिक एनर्जी एंड अनदर इज पोटेंशियल एनर्जी वंस यू ऐड काइनेटिक एनर्जी एंड पोटेंशियल एनर्जी टू टोटल हियर यू कैन सी x स्क्वायर x स्क्वायर फैक्टर विल गेट कैंसिल सो ओनली हाफ and um, m omega square a square this is the factor we are having this is the total energy we are having it is half m omega square a square now you can see this graph i have mentioned here this is extreme position this is extreme position here we have mean position so when you when the particle is at mean position at mean position potential energy is minimum here but kinetic energy will be maximum and at extreme position what will be the kinetic energy minimum here it is and at extreme position potential energy will be maximum and that will be the total energy by that time here it is but uh, when you are talking about any point which is between the mean position or extreme position it is somewhere else so you can see that potential energy and kinetic energy both factor will be there by that time so wherever you will go mean position extreme position or between somewhere if it is wherever you are the total energy will be this only that is half m omega square a square so this won't change so this is the kinetic energy here, here i have written and this is the potential energy here i have written so there is one question that where the kinetic energy and potential energy are equal both are equal so you can see here if i consider to be kinetic energy equal to potential energy so from there the derivation of this kinetic energy and potential energy you can equate and you can get the idea that that x position is it is plus minus of a by root 2 so this is the position here we are having this graph and this is the position here we are having plus side right side we are having so on the basis of this plus and minus you can say the kinetic energy will be potential energy sometimes it is also asked that at what time the kinetic energy and potential energy will be equal with respect to the time of uh, time period it is so once you are having x is equal to s and omega t so if i suppose to put x to be where the kinetic energy and potential energy is equal so that is x is equal to a by root 2 so here on the basis of this one you can see here that t we are getting that t is time we are getting it is time of uh, time period divided by eight times at this time kinetic energy will be equal to potential energy and likewise there are there will be many questions that they can let that kinetic energy is three times of potential energy uh, three three by fourth times of potential energy where it will be so you can relate like this only what if, what the kinetic energy it is given to you and potential energy relation you write over there and find out that x position and put out over here and find out that time here only there will be various kind of question based on this concept only so that you can keep in mind that how you can relate this is the graph i have drawn here this you can see here on the basis of this graph this is actually coefficient of x square is negative here so this concave upward graph will be potential energy because this coefficient of x square here we have positive so this concave upward graph is potential energy concave downward graph is of kinetic energy and the total sum wherever you will go it will be having half m omega square a square that is your total energy and this is the graph between total energy and the displacement so this point we are having the kinetic energy and potential energy coinciding same it is this point also we are having the kinetic energy and potential energy same it is so from extreme to extreme how many times we are having the kinetic energy and potential energy same two times only two times only why because when we are having this kinetic energy and potential energy same means its value what the value we are having at that position here we are having kinetic energy so the graph is getting coincide over there so what you can say about the at a mean position here at mean position potential energy is zero but kinetic energy is maximum here it is so you can see that accordingly you can analysis from this graph that how many times we are having the kinetic energy equal to potential energy only two times here first times uh, this is uh, from me extreme position towards mean position when it is coming and uh, this position also you can see the, when mean position to extreme position it is going so by that time this is the 
uh, this or you can say first time and this is the second time we are having that kinetic energy and potential energy equal. Kinetic energy and potential energy, if it is equal, then what you can say? Sometimes it is asked you that there will be some ratio of the kinetic energy and potential energy. You substitute over there the ratio, find out that X value and put it in the displacement relation and then find the time. There will be only two, three questions which will be based on this time and displacement where it will be like that question will be, that's it. So I hope it is easy for you to understand how you can relate kinetic energy and potential energy, everything I have discussed here. Now you have simple pendulum to learn about that how you can go for a simple pendulum formula. We know that it is time period is two pi root under L by G. And if you are changing the length L and G is constant over there, G is not getting changed. So what you can say, this is the relative error in the time period is delta T by T, it is half delta L. So how you, I have written this one on the basis of this error formula, you must have learned in unit and dimension chapter that how you can write for error, relative error it is. So this kind of question already asked in JMN. Whenever the gravity is getting changed, so by that time we have the relative error in time like this, this relation you can use over there. Here I'm considering L to be constant. L is not getting changed. There may be possibility that both are getting changed. So when both are getting changed, then you can re relate here. It is that the square of this relation, you'll be getting T square, four pi squared L by G. This is constant value. So you just go for the variables here, which is considered to be the relative error. So here two times of relative error of the time period, time period, then this is relative error of the length and this is relative error of the G. This is the question asked in 2022 that find out the relative error of G when the time period relative error, there's some information given here, this length also some information given here. So you can calculate on the basis of this one. 22 question I and J man it is asking. Now the coming to the next segment that what we are having oscillation of the spring. So this is the next topic that oscillation of the spring. So I'm considering that when the spring is kept horizontal. So whenever we have horizontal spring, horizontal kind of a spring, it is kept like this. This is the spring we are having this M mass and K constant. And this is here it is, this is the ground it is, is I'm considering this exposition, no deformation. And this is a smooth is surface here it is. So once this, there will be some external force over there due to which this block is getting stretched over here and some displacement X is happening in this direction. So what is here you can go for, if it is, this is the extreme position where it is going and at extreme position, we must be having that speed zero. And if it is there, then the we can say the block execute SHM here. So here you can say this block execute, execute SHM. And for that SHM, you can say that what will be the amplitude here it is. So amplitude will be from this x is equal to zero to x is equal to this x naught if I'm considering. So from here to here, we are having this is amplitude only. So what is the amplitude? Amplitude, there will be some uh, nexus you can get the amplitude, but this is one of the better information that where the amplitude we are having, that point we are having a speed zero. Uh, that point we are having kinetic energy zero. These are the two things which keep in mind to find out the amplitude factor. Sometimes it is difficult to find the amplitude. So this thing you can keep in mind that where the amplitude will be that time we have a speed zero over there. So that is the extreme position considered to be. So here amplitude of the oscillation, you can say X naught. Then the second point here, you can say that what will be the time period here it is. So time period I can write here, this is simply Time period is equal to 2 pi root under this mass of the block here it is m by k. So this is on the basis of this format here, it, what will be the omega value? So it will be k by m format, k by m format, this one omega. So that is the thing you should keep in mind. Sometimes it happens that the direct question is not coming like this one spring and block system, they may arrange the spring combination over there. So the, if this combination of a spring will be there, then what you can do is combination of a springs. So when the spring combination is given to you series, series combination. So in case of series combination, what kind of diagram you can make of this is uh, one spring here, it is K1 called, and then we have another spring, this is K2 called, and then we have the block attached here, block. This is block having mass m. So when you replace this 
diagram with a single spring and uh, let's suppose that the spring I'm considering here it is k. What will be the k value? So when we have this uh, spring in series format, this you can write one by k is equal to one by k1 plus of one by k2. And if it is more a spring like this only, you can calculate. So k is your effective uh, spring constant. You can say here effective. This is effective spring constant. So k is your effective spring constant and that k you can write it is 2k1 k2 divided by k1 plus k2. This is the k value you'll be getting. After getting this k value, what you can find out the time period it is. Time period will be 2 pi root under. There is no any change in mass here it is. So m done divided by this k here it is k, this k. So here it this k is k1 and k2 that you k1 and k2 terms you can find out this k and then you substitute over here, this will be the k equivalent. This is the case when uh, the block and strings are kept horizontal. May possible that it is not the case. It is given to you in this format that one spring is attached, this k1, and the other spring is also attached. Here it is, this k2, and this is attached with the ceiling, and one block is attached at the other end of this one. And here also you'll be getting the same uh, same result in this case also you'll be getting the same result what we are getting in first case now coming to the next segment that key, something uh, important these are the things uh, maybe a string will be connected in series and parallel you can find out you must have learned in a string case chapter also that how to attach that is given in Newton's law as well as in work power energy chapter also you could have gone through, but uh, here I'm actually I'm using the time period calculation. So I'm assume using this uh, spring connection also. One thing you can keep in mind that whenever we have series connection, then in that case, force develop in both the spring will be same. Whatever the force develop will be there in the both spring, it will be same. And as extension in the two spring may be different. What will be the extension in the two spring? It will be so. See here, depending upon the k value, you can have the extension. So this is the important point you can write regarding series connection. That extension in the two springs may be different. this will be x1 by x2 x1 is the elongation in one and x2 is the elongation in two this will depend upon this is k2 by k1 inverse relation to k1 k2 likewise this relation you are having then energy if i'll talk about the second important point which is their energy stored so you know that uh, energy stored in a spring it is half kx square but here it is if i'll say you energy stored so energy is stored may be different why because of uh, this x will be different here may be different so here it is may be different and that different it will be due to extension only so this relation you can write it is u1 by u2 will be it is uh, x1 by x2 relation then you are having it is K2 by K1 relation. So this you have to keep in mind when series connection will be there. And what the total extension will be there when it is series connection, that total extension. So total extension will be, total extension will be this I'm considering X and that will be X1 plus of X2. So this is the total extension it will be. Now coming to the parallel combination that how, when it is connected with parallelly, the springs are connected in parallel combination. So in this case, you can consider parallel combination. You have to have that kind of like relation. This equivalent effective effective will be effective spring constant. Effective spring constant. This will be, I'm looking for K value and this will be K1 plus of K2. And what will be the time period? This time period will be 2 pi root under m by m by k, where this k is k effective that you have to use. How you can understand that if the springs are connected parallelly? So this is the 
diagram I'm making here. This spring is it has direct here. It is this M mass, and this spring is it has here. It is this is one spring I'm considering here K one. Another spring constant I'm considering K two, and the surface here on which this is kept here it is a smooth. Now if you change this diagram in the single uh, spring format here it will be so this block is having M mass and this is having K. So this is a smooth, it is called surface. So this is the effective, uh, what you can say, a spring constant and on basis of that, you can find out that uh, if, uh, this time period on, um, only here it is. Sometimes this diagram, parallel diagram, maybe like this it is, if this is the diagram, there are, um, there may be students said that they will be having difficult to understand which combination this spring it is, if it is M is given to in between. And the spring is it has both side here, it is K1 and the right side we are having K2, K2. So what you can say the same equivalent you will be getting in this case also, we are having the same equivalent here, K is equal to K1 plus K2. This is also parallel combination only. So here also you'll be getting the same. So same time period will be there, but few things important point regarding the series I have mentioned here, few thing important point regarding the parallel I'm mentioning here it is, what is that? So what the force develop will be there in the two spring that may be different. What I said there also in case of series force develop in both spring will be same. But here in case of force develop in the two spring may be different, may be different. Deformation in the spring, what it will be? Deformation in the spring, it will be same. Why? Because both end attached with the wall, both end attached with the block itself. So in this case, we have same deformation. This is the important point. So here it is uh, deformation. deformation in the in the spring spring that will be same or same it is same it will be and the third second important point here it is energy stored energy stored may be different may be different may be different and that will be like this this is f1 by f2 if i'm talking about this is equal to F1 is equal to F2 is equal to K1 by K2 and is equal to U1 by U2. So this is the force relation, ratio of the force you can say and K1 by K2 and U1 by U2 you can say. Now there is also one thing which you need to keep in mind that if the spring is cupped of a a spring constant k suppose this i am considering that uh, one spring is there there this spring is having a spring constant k it is and this spring is cut it this spring is cut already cut of the spring is happening in n equal parts cut in n equal parts if this spring is cut in n equal part so what will be the new spring constant of each of the spring so in that case, the new spring constant, new spring constant, this is important, new spring constant of each of, each of, each of the spring, each of the spring that will be equal to n times of k, this one. So this is uh, one thing you have to keep in mind uh, when a spring is getting cut and then the other thing parallel and series combination I discuss on the basis of that you can find out the time period and uh, sometimes it is amplitude, sometimes it is extensions also, sometimes it is energy ratio and force ratio they can ask you. So many questions can be based on this concept only. Uh, there are various uh, oscillation uh, commonly used uh, question which is getting asked in J main, J advanced from there just I have taken the this diagram only so that it will be helpful for you to remember this one this kind of example already asked in j main and j advanced this kind of diagram you should keep in result uh, so that you can save your time if this block is there and there is one spring it has here it is with the ground this one and the other side we are having other side we are having one block it has here m this is having k so in this case, what the time period we are having, it is two pi root under m by k. This is one diagram you have to keep in mind that simple diagram it is. But if suppose I change the position of this spring with the ceiling one. So this is the second diagram it is. And there will be, uh, 
that uh, you can easily solve this one, but but, but uh, in exam hall, just point of view that I'm revising it so that you can keep in mind direct, you can use over there. The result you can use to save your time. So this is block here I'm attaching. This M mass block, it is attached with this. This way a spring is there and this spring is having constant case. So in this case, uh, you'll be having time period two pi root under 4m by k. This format it is, this is one of the four, two format. Then the third format you are having, this is only four, three, four format. It is uh, normally they change the position only they last. That is only you have to keep in mind this. Uh, once you are going for solving, no matter, uh, you can check it. But if you have that result is there in your mind, you can solve quickly over there. So here we are having one spring constant k here. In this case also we are having time period. This is two pi root under, but uh, it is two pi root under, but the difference here it is we have this value. It is uh, m divided by four k. These are the result which I have written here so that you can remember and uh, you can go through this diagram. Uh, maybe J main, uh, J advance uh, already asked this kind of question. It is previously in J main also this kind of question already asked it is. So maybe that uh, can help you to find out the time period kind of things. But there are two results also, which I'm going to write. That is also important that this is the fourth one. So whenever we have uh, this kind of result, it is this a spring is having some mass. This spring mass is, this is heavy a spring. So when heavy spring will be there, in that heavy spring, if the spring mass is m over there, and the block which is attached with this heavy spring, let's suppose this m it is. So in this case, what the time period will be having? This is two pi, and then we have m plus of m by three and divided by k. It depends upon you that you can remember the data or you can remember the. This, these are few a good example from where you can find out this. Now there is the, this is the last example which I have considered here because it will be, it will be important one. Here we have one spring attached with this disc here it is. This is not, and no sleeping condition. No sleeping condition. And uh, this radius of this disc is R, and this is the direction of omega here it is and this is i is the moment of inertia you can say here it is to be used moment of inertia moment of inertia so what will be the here this moment of inertia about this axis it is this is in this direction you can say it is it has this mass of this uh this direction we are having this is the axis about which it is rotating and then mass of this uh this case m only you can say here so what will be the time period here? It will be, it is two pi root under M, then it is I divided by R squared. These are the result which I am writing directly and K constant. So likewise, you have this result, this result, two result, and then uh, this result, it is, it will help maybe while you are writing the example. I'm not saying that you just go through it and remember it, but, uh, these are the few results which you keep in mind so that it can, uh, there must be many results you are keeping in mind so that you can do the better over there. Sometimes it happens that this is the last format um, that uh, if the two spring, if the two blocks are attached with the spring, let's suppose this is, I am considering M1 and then one spring is there and uh, it is attached, other end of the spring is attached with the another mass, it is K2 and this K is there, K is there. So what you can see here, here this kind of thing, uh, you can write, this is based on the reduced mass uh, concept it is. So this I'm considering here, one block system, this M I'm considering here, and this is uh, what it is, a spring constant. So what will be the time period in this case is, it is two pi root under, it will be mu by K, mu by K, where, where mu is one by mu, you can write this is one by M1 and one by, M2. Here it is M1, M2 attached. So this from here you can calculate where mu is called. This mu is called reduced mass. So on the basis of this you can calculate and then you will get that result. Uh, everything what I have written here, this is 
on the basis of that. This uh, actually, it is what I have written here. This is mu, mu it is. This what I have written here, it is, it is mu. This is mu. So next we have a physical pendulum to understand. Next concept we have physical pendulum. Physical pendulum. What is the physical pendulum to understand? That's where it is. Here it is. So physical pendulum, well, we are talking about in case of physical pendulum, two things you need to keep in mind that there will be uh, this, let's suppose I'm considering this to be the physical uh, pendulum here. And uh, this is the origin, here it is. This is not origin, this is the point at which uh, you can say that uh, it is Is that one? 